Hi everyone, welcome to another preview into one of my full length tutorials which is available over on Patreon. This is a lovely bobcat which I completed on a 12 by 16 inch piece of pastel mat, so that's about A3. This is just a very short insight into what is about a six hour real time lesson where I take you through all of the colors that I use as I use them, the reason why I'm using that particular tone and the technique that I'm using as well. I also provide you with a outline if you need it, a reference image of course, an image of my artwork and the materials list up front so you can get all set up in preparation for the tutorial which is always released at the start of each month. So the reason why I wanted to pull together a bobcat is because they have the most beautiful fur which is dark at the base and then you've got these really light tips so it's similar to something like a wild rabbit which has this agouti fur and I also wanted to work from this particular reference photo because the eye is just so intense it's gorgeous and although I'm working small you can see I'm packing quite a few different tones in there to bring it to life eyes are never just going to be just one tone of brown one tone of yellow try and pack in as many as you can the key to realism is as many tones you can get and you can see she has the most beautiful highlight in her eye it's very small but I'll be taking you through how I get these tiny little specks in there you can see my lead is quite blunt but I actually work fairly blunt in general most people assume that you need to work super sharp and that does work for people if you're quite heavy-handed but because I have quite a light touch, I'm able to get in really fine details, even whiskers with a slightly blunter edge. It's just about finding the slight point on the blunt lead, which probably doesn't make sense. But once you get used to working a little bit blunter, then you might start to see what I mean. These tutorials can absolutely still be done with a fine point, however you like to work with your pastel pencils. I'm not telling you that this way is right, this way is wrong, it's just a guidance. If you want to learn my technique and how to get the, the same kind of finish that I do, then these lessons are absolutely for you. So in this preview, you can see how I'm working this base up. I'm adding in lots of different tones. As I said before, the more tones you can get in, especially with the fur, then the more realistic it's going to look. And it's not going to look too boring or too flat. And we also want lots of depth in this fur. You can see it's really plush and thick. So what you want to do is start to build up a nice thick base. Now I know a lot of people, especially those who are just starting out in pastels, get a little bit concerned about over condensing the paper. They go a little bit too hard, add too many thick layers in, and what happens is then they come to me and say, oh, I can't seem to add the details on top. They're just not showing up. That's because you've added too many thick layers, the pastel matte paper, or any other paper that you're using, it's reached its limit. So it can't really take any more pastel. So you've got your base down, that's brilliant. But when you start adding your details on top, it's an absolute nightmare because it's, it's taken all the layers it can. So my method is lots of layers, but make them nice and thin. So it's just about applying a very sparse layer with your soft pastel to begin with, or your pastel pencils. And then you give that a blend, see how it's looking, and then add another layer and then another layer on top, just gradually until you cannot see any of the paper showing through and your tones are looking nice and rich. You don't need to get to the stage where you've got at least a millimeter of pigment sitting on your paper, that is too much. So the key is a good blend and lots of thin layers. So this is a process that I always talk you through in all of my tutorials and I started off in the beginning completely getting it wrong with my base layers when I first started in pastels and I've really learned now to refine my base technique and get to the stage where I actually haven't ever, well I haven't over condensed the paper in so many years now because you just get to know the paper, you get to know if it's 
reaching its limits and you get to know you know at what point you need to stop and just go on to the details now. So I'm just at the end of the base stage here you can see it's at that stage where it's actually looking quite realistic even though we don't have any of those final details in yet. So that's where you want to be at at the end of your base stage. It always needs to look when you squint your eyes almost done obviously without all of the actual hairs but you want a good gradient in there so you want your light areas your highlights your medium areas and your dark areas all established and you want lots of shape in there so that's where those highlights come in and the the dark areas which some are shadows so get all of that in in the base stage and what that means is you don't have to then get that in at the detail stage and the detail stage can just then be about literally adding details and nothing else really. I mean, you can always, you know, add more highlight in with your light hairs. And I always darken areas up with my dark hairs, but it's not always essential. So you've kind of got your dark areas dark enough already at the base stage. And the same with your highlights. So you're not having to pack heaps and heaps and heaps of hairs in at the detail stage. To get those light areas looking light, dark areas looking dark, etc. The hair stage is actually very similar to the base stage. It's about lots of layers, but very thin layers, so very sparse and not pressing too hard at all. We don't want the hairs to come out too thick. So I'm now starting to work in my first initial layer of hairs. I always generally try to start off dark just like my base and that just ensures that the depth is in there. If you start off really light, what's going to happen is those light hairs are going to sit too bright on top of this darker base. So you actually want to gradually get lighter from dark to medium to light. The other thing you want to do with your hair details is take some of the, the tones that you add in, added in at the base stage, so the browns, those vibrant tones, and reinforce them with hair details. So those areas that look particularly warm in the photograph, I'm just going over the top with a Burnt Umber from Faber-Castell, which is 280, a Vista as well, 179 from Faber-Castell. So they start to really warm up even more, really reinforce that brown and yellow tone in the face, it's great that we've got it in at the base stage, but it still means you do need to get it in at the detail stage. It just helps to make that tone really, really pop, which is especially important for quite a vibrant face like this. Another tone I added plenty of in this bobcat is a grey, but trying to stick mainly to the warm greys because as you can see in the photograph, this bobcat as on the warmer side there are some cold gray hints in there very subtly so I will be getting some cooler grays in there as well but the majority is warm so we need to build up the first initial layer of hairs with these warmer grays so this is my gray 3 from Stabilo 704 and I'm just starting to work it around in those lighter areas Try not to condense too much as I move into the darker areas where we're leaving quite a few gaps and that enables us to see lots of that depth underneath where the base is a little bit darker and that's important for fur like this where it's slightly darker underneath and then it starts to get a little bit lighter until we have these brighter tips. So I'm also using my Stabilo Ivory 105. This is a more yellow base tone, so that's just going to warm up and lift the fur even more. And then I can use my Titanium White from Stabilo 100 to start to really lift some of those areas which do sit the brightest, so some of those highlights. Those are really just a few of the tones that I use in this lesson. As I said before, this is just a short preview, so I'm skipping quite a lot but obviously the full length one everything's real time there's no skips going on and if you do have any questions as you're watching then you can pop them in the comment box there's a link to the youtube lesson but you can also watch it on patreon as well 
And if you don't want to publicly comment, although I don't think anyone actually reads them, you can drop me a private message either on Patreon or my email address is on Patreon as well. My favourite part is adding the whiskers. I'm just adding the ones on the left here. The ones on the right, I don't want to add too many of those longer ones because we've still got the base to add on the right. So where the chin is and obviously slightly into the neck as well. But I cannot resist adding these ones in. I'm always itching to get the whiskers added in because I feel like it really transforms the piece. It's just that little touch that brings your work to life so whenever I get the chance I'll add them in once I've finished certain areas So onto the ears, my least favourite part of animals. I don't know why, I just don't find them particularly interesting. I know a lot of ears do have character and actually some dog ears, like the curly ones, they're nice and challenging. But generally I just find them, a, I don't know, I think everyone has their least favourite areas. I don't find them particularly challenging. I think that's what it is. They, they're fairly straightforward, most of them. Although these ones are probably a bit more on the challenging side because especially that right one, you've got lots of tufty fur going lots of different directions. But yeah, otherwise they don't particularly engage me that much. But I don't dislike doing them. I just prefer other areas. <laughs> Obviously, the eyes are my absolute favourite. I also like noses as well. Um, the fur as a whole, I do love. And what else do I like? Obviously, the whiskers. Um, but definitely, eyes are top. <laughs> they are my priority. I always start with those or, or the nose as well. But I'd love to hear what your favourite part of an animal is to draw and the least favourite as well. Just pop them in the comment box below. I always love asking questions like that because everyone's slightly different. I know some people start off with the fur first and like to leave the eyes till last because they find them a little bit harder. Anyway, I will stop nattering and leave you in peace just while I finish off the ears here. And then I'll pop in and start talking again just as we move on to the next section. But obviously in the actual tutorial on Patreon, it is all, I talk through everything. So there's no big pauses. I always like to keep repeating this because I'm always worried people are going to assume that this preview is an indication of what the lesson is like. It is in terms of what you can see on the screen. So the reference image, the the footage as well but in terms of the skipping sections that's not there everything is done real time and I obviously the voiceover is slightly different in that I don't just jump over areas everything's talked through nicely
moving down to the back of the chin and down into the cheek. So I'm using the same tones that I used in the rest of the face because they are nice and consistent in this bobcat. So just using my Natural Earth 18, which is a really nice light beige tone, just to start to lift this area here, but get some nice warmth in there as well. So my Smink White as well, just to start to lift at the bottom here. So a good blend with my sponge as always, just to smooth everything out and get that first initial layer of base blended in. And then starting to work the black marks in now. This tutorial is one of so many now on Patreon. I have over three years now worth of tutorials. So I normally upload two a month. So one focus one, which is a shorter one, which just normally focuses on a certain area or certain subject. And then I have my full length ones, which are minimum six hours long. So if you think I've done two of those every month for over three years, that is a lot. And there's, I think, pretty much every animal or kind of obvious animal, popular animal that you can think now. I started off with the main ones first and now they're starting to get a little bit more kooky like the bobcat. And they're all available to view or preview on my website. I also have them in my collections tab on Patreon. So before you sign up, if you do want to check if I have, say, a fox or a rabbit or a bird or a horse, then it's all there. And the tutorial library on my website is excellent because it basically lists every single lesson with a little icon. And you can easily click on part one, part two, part three, part four, etc and it just takes you directly to that post and to that lesson. Equally, you can go through Patreon, there's the collections tab, and that basically clumps all of the animals together in little separate uh, icons, and you can just press on those and it does exactly the same thing. So it's all very easy to access. You don't have to keep scrolling down through Patreon, which, it was like that for quite a long time. The collections tab is actually quite a new thing, which is why I had to create the website page with all of the tutorials on because the more and more lessons I was adding, the more you'd have to scroll through Patreon and it was just becoming a nightmare, but it's all so easy to use now. And I get no complaints, which is wonderful. Obviously, I can't control the Patreon platform. I just have my page, but I haven't had any 
um, worries or complaints or queries about it at all in the last year, which is brilliant. So Patreon have really started to listen to us artists and creators in terms of how we want our users to use the platform. So just like the head, I'm adding lots of these hair layers in, warm tones, grey tones, just mixing it up, making sure the fur is nice and thick and of course full of lovely vibrant tones. So my dark hair details are very important to keep layering in. That just ensures the depth is maintained and it always makes the fur look more striking as well. When I wasn't adding in the dark hair details when I kind of first started out in pastels, it's amazing the difference between my previous work and then when I started adding my layers of dark details in. They look so much more striking now than they used to. So it's definitely a good method to make your fur look much more detailed and obviously it's another layer that you're adding in which will always benefit your work. The more hair layers you can add in, the thicker and denser your fur is going to look which is always a good thing. So to start to lift I'm using my Dark Flesh 50% from Karen Dash which is number 746 and a mix of my grey 3 as well. So we're starting off more with mid tones and then we can start to lighten even more with other tones. So not forgetting to add in some cold tones as well. So the other benefit to my lessons, which I've been complimented on, is the fact that I don't have any real background noise going on. I cut out, if there's any disturbance in the background, any noise, I cut it out. And I don't have music on or anything like that. It's very much as it is now, as I'm speaking. So you can kind of hear the, the teaching method. I don't do it live, so I'm able to really think about what I'm saying, talk through things properly as well. So what I do is I film all of this absolutely silent on my camera, and then I pop it into my editing software and I just let it run, and I just talk as if I was doing it live. The reason I don't do it live is A, because I do like to have a little think about what I'm going to say and talk through things properly instead of just rushing. I also have a lot of background noise going on around my house. So if I'm doing it live, then we're going to have to stop the lesson and it's just, I like to keep things very clean and professional so this way works best and as I say I've had lots of compliments about it so if you're looking for lessons with zero distractions 
then these ones are for you. In terms of my different tiers, because I do get asked this as well, I've got a, a few going on. So I've got the focus tier, which, as I mentioned before, it's just small sections of animals or types of fur. So curly fur, wet fur, paws, eyes, noses, etc. Backgrounds as well. So that's mainly for people who are new to pastels, not quite confident yet or perhaps used to use pastels and have and are coming back to them and they just want to get back to the basics, they're brilliant just for easing you in without basically worrying you too much or overwhelming you. Then we've got the full animal and backlog tier. So that does what it says in the tin, it's full animals. So they're the longer lessons and they're more for if you're a little bit more adventurous, you want to try full start to finish animals, but it's no, not necessarily just for people who are a bit more experienced. I have complete beginners in that tier as well, and they're absolutely loving it. So you can always start off with a focus tier if you're a little bit worried, and then you can upgrade really easily to the medium tier. And then the one above that is my VIP tier, which it has all of the lessons in the other tiers. It just means you get to send me an artwork once a month, which doesn't have to be a tutorial. It can be anything and I'll critique, critique it. If you're worried about maybe a commission and you're stuck with it, then you can send it to me and I'll help you out with it. Another thing to mention about my lessons is you can cancel any time, there's no contract. I think people get a little bit worried because it's a subscription service, but like any other subscription, you can join whenever you want and then you can quit before the end of the month and it's not going to charge you going into the next month. So you, you don't have to stay very long. You can only stay for a month if you want. If there's just one tutorial that you want to access and then you're done, that's absolutely fine. Equally, you can stay for as long as you want. The subscription will just keep rolling if you don't cancel. The other option I now do have is if you don't want to do Patreon and that it's just not your thing, you can just drop me an email or you can drop me a comment underneath the video here and I'll get back to you. And basically you can now purchase the tutorials as a one-off. So what I'll do is send you the links in an email and obviously complete with the outline, etc. everything you get in Patreon, but it's an email form. And it does actually mean you can then always access that. You'll have that for the rest of your life. And I normally will just take bank transfer if you're in the UK or PayPal if you're international. Please do let me know if you have any questions about my lessons. Just drop them in the comment box below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I know it's often confusing, especially with technology, so I'm always here to help and help guide you as well. It's not one of those things where you'll join and then it's just left to you to try and figure it out and you'll never hear from me. That's not the case. You can always drop me a message and I'll always get back to you.
So onto the chest area, I'm using my Smink Sirius Black just to start to map out some of these spots here. So you'll see there's a white outline. I tend to work my outline first in graphite very lightly and then when I'm happy with the shape I'll go over the top with a white pastel pencil. The reason I use white pastel pencil is because when I layer, especially with my darker tones, I do like to still see the shape and outline underneath whereas if you use a black pastel pencil then it does tend to just get completely lost and blended in with the rest of the base. And black also is a little bit harder to erase if you do make a mistake or you need to change the shape of something. So generally I do like to prefer white, but it is just personal preference. And sometimes, occasionally I will use a black depending on the color of the paper. Obviously the light gray paper, I will use a black pastel pencil, but I always use it very light in pressure. I don't press hard at all. So you can really see all of these tones I'm adding in here. This is just the first initial layer that I'm blending in here. So it's not going to cover the paper completely and you're still going to see some of these lines where I've added these soft pastel in. So there's lots more blending to go. So it's just about having a, a lot of patience with pastel work, although it is a lot quicker than colored pencil, which I mean, I started out in colored pencil and comparing it now to pastel, I mean, pastel is a lot messier, which is the only downside, but it's just, I can finish portraits so much quicker. This bog cat took me about six hours. Whereas I think if I drew it in colored pencil, it would take probably near 12 hours to be honest. So it is a nice quick medium to use. So working in the direction of the fur growth, so the natural fur growth, and that just starts to get some good dynamic movement into the fur. Even though it's short fur, we do still need some nice movement in there to bring it to life. Otherwise it's going to look very stiff, just very, very flat. So yet another blend here. I get a lot of questions about what this tool is. It is a pan pastel sponge with a knife. So you can get lots of different shapes. I use the oval one and sometimes the round, but I do prefer the ovals because you can get a nice point when you're working your soft pastel in, you can really be nice and accurate, which I love to do to create the soft fur in the base stage. So you can get them, I think, in most countries uh, and they're an absolute staple of mine. I cannot do what I do without them. So if you're wondering about what to use to blend, then absolutely go for the pan pastel sponge and knife. Another staple of mine is the Creta color. It's actually a charcoal instead of chalk. And I only discovered it probably about two years ago, but it, I cannot go without it. I use it in every single portrait. It's just so much darker than any other black. So particularly for spots, um, insides of nostrils, pupils, when you just want that added depth that you don't quite get with a Stabilo black or a Faber-Castell black, then this, the Caran d'Ache one is honestly, it will change your life if you haven't used it yet. So I think it is one of those ones which perhaps isn't available in every single country but definitely look it up um, and see because it's, it's wonderful. The only downside with it is it's an absolute nightmare to sharpen. It's because it's charcoal, it's so brittle. It's, it's even more of a pain than your pastel pencils, which will occasionally snap. So you cannot use a pencil sharpener with it because it is too brittle. 
But to be honest, I never use a pencil sharpener with my pastel pencils. What I do is I have a Stanley knife. They're the Swan Morton ones, and I have the 10A blade. And what I do is just cut away the wood very, very gently. And then if I do need to sharpen the point a little bit more, I'll use a piece of sandpaper. But for the Cretacolor, you don't want to use a blade that's even slightly blunt. So what I normally do is I have one uh, blade for my regular pastel pencils, and then I'll have a separate one, which I only use for Cretacolor. So it keeps it nice and sharp and it just glides through the wood and doesn't lob off the lead. But you do still have to be very, very delicate. So a very light hand is needed. You'll see there's lots and lots of layers going on here. So what I'm doing now is starting to work a few little fly away tips in, which makes the fur look nice and fluffy. You don't want the fur all going pretty much the same direction. You do want to work some nice loose tips in here and there, working them into some of these spots as well, just to break up those edges and make the fur look a little bit scruffy. It's never going to be pristine and perfect because it's an animal so just you can go a little bit crazy with these you don't have to completely follow a specific direction you've got the general direction that you have in the photograph but feel free to work a few ends out into the spots here and there out into the background as well just pay attention to the the length of the hairs in each particular area so Obviously the ones uh, on the edge of the head, they're nice and long, the ones I worked in earlier. These ones are a tiny bit shorter. They get a little bit longer as we move down to the sort of start of the legs there, but otherwise they are quite short. Anyway, I'm going to leave you in peace to watch me just finish off the back. There is a little bit of wood that is in the way in the reference photo. I removed that in my head and just used my imagination. I wanted a little bit more back in there. So what I did is just kind of carried on what I could see just on the edge of that piece of wood. Just use my imagination really. It's very, very straightforward. You just, you don't need to create anything different. Obviously, if there was a leg there, that would be a bit more challenging because you really don't know what it looks like. But because we're just following on from the back, it's easier than you think. So as I said before, this is a full length tutorial. It's roughly six hours long, comes complete with an outline materials list and reference image and I talk through pretty much the whole way, tell you about the colors I'm using. I uh, talk about the, or I mentioned the, the number as well, in case some of you know by number instead of the actual name. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this preview. I'll just leave you for the last couple of minutes just to watch me finish off. But thank you for your support. If you have subscribed, if you haven't and you do want to, then it's very simple to do. You just do so below. Or if you want to like the video, that always helps with my engagement and getting seen. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your day.